Hello everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful night or day or whatever it is for you. Now there is a wonderful, um, I guess you could call it a documentary or a docu-something, um, by Jubilee, interesting name, but about, um, does slavery affect your family? And something I wanted to bring up is guerrilla warfare. Now, before I show you what's about to happen, I want to bring something up. Whenever you see the older generation talking to the younger generation, you'll see what I call man syndrome. And whenever you hear older African-Americans or anybody from the older generation, you hear them saying things like, boy, you have no idea how hard it was back in our day. And it's much easier in this time. And um, y'all didn't have to get the water hoses and the dogs. And the, you'll hear them saying stuff like that, like, why can't you do it in this day and age? And that's the guerrilla warfare. That's the divine conquer. And I'll, ex I'll explain what I mean in this simple example real quick. Watch this. Racism is the main cause of poverty among black people in America. Now, whenever somebody hears a question, they come and sit down if they agree with it. Now, if you'll notice, there's an older man in the background, and he agrees with most of the questions, but not with this one. He doesn't agree with it has anything to do with the poverty. And this is the main idea of divine conquer. You give enough people enough jobs and voices to make the people who are still in poverty seem like they're crazy, seem like they're not working hard enough, seem like they're not getting up. But do you think the percentages of us getting jobs is any different than when it was back in the 60s and the 70s? See, when I say man syndrome, they might not be holding up big signs that say stay out of my neighborhood. Like I said, they might not be spraying with water hoses and doing stuff like that. But if race doesn't matter, <clears throat> I'm sorry. If race doesn't matter, then why do we still have to check boxes about race when dealing with job applications? When dealing with schools, when I do surveys to make 50, 60 cents, surveys that take probably 15, 20 minutes on my little banking app, um, why does it ask for my race every time? You see, it's guerrilla warfare because they'll make it seem like we're complaining or we're lazy. You see like a lot of people living in their parents' house. And I'm telling you, this is extending to all of humanity. Corporate... These plantations are trying to turn into corporation plantations. And when the oppressed talk long enough and nobody listens, the oppressors win. And so this is what I want to bring up. Watch and pay attention real quick. Racism is a very big issue that talking about it, I'm really trying to be careful to not like say anything that will be insensitive. If opportunity is right here. And they're going to bring up another point as well when talking. This is how they separate Africans and African-Americans. What they'll do is, and you'll notice them pull it up, Africans have something to where they're in extreme poverty sometimes. Lack of food, lack of water, these basic resources. But they're going to explain they have a strong community. They don't have certain people looking down on them constantly like that. And if they do, it's about, and if they do, it's about a poverty thing versus a rich thing. And so then... You'll notice over here, she brings up a good point. We might have the basic foods and waters and stuff, food and water and other necessities, but we have no allies, nowhere to turn. The older generation said we're being soft. The new generation, they want to get everybody into rapidy hip hop and doing this type of everything under the sun. You see what I'm saying? It's like they're trying to blend us in and give us nothing to work with, so to speak. Yeah. They will give it to people of other race than African American and Africans too. So if there's a job that maybe have math requirement, I feel like they'll pick an Asian person or they believe, oh, African Americans will not dress appropriate. So they will pick another person. They will always like pick people that are not black over people that are black. And I also think, um, I think the crucial like missing point when we talk about economic disparity, time, time is the most valuable currency. Mm. and. If you have like a stock that's like the American dream is the stock and you know during all that time all that asset the American dream was appreciating and you're not allowed to take out business loans you're not allowed to read you're not allowed to write you have to first fight to become three-fifths of a citizen then you preaching facts straight facts thank you Jim Crow and then you got everything else it's like 
you're now having to buy in at a price so high because but let me speak facts on africans behalf now see they have they have taken away a lot of education a lot of wealth and knowledge put people in poverty type areas if you even pay attention to um where a lot of these forefathers got knowledge and information it was africa and then africa was dissected later on by people that was wanting greed and power and stuff like with Belgium and Portugal and Spain and France and Germany, I'm telling you. The time is irreparable. You can't get that back. One black person today cannot, in one lifetime, achieve what generations of white families were able to do simply because they didn't have to compete with us to do it. Yeah. I'm, I, I hear people talking about their bank accounts and how much their family acquired. Like, dude, if I hear anything over like 50 grand, I start to get, I don't want to say sick, but it's like, bro my mind starts to just go into daydream land i don't fathom that type of money i've never been a, i've lived paying the electric bill or not stuff like that like when we are telling you we are not from the same cloth and our lives are hard we are trying to tell people it's from every angle i agree with you totally like yeah i was thinking just like you said from a historical standpoint we start with slavery then that's centuries generations of stolen labor like you said then we get into jim crow which is just an extension of that then we have redlining we have mass incarceration we have events like the bombing of tulsa and rosewood in florida and all these different examples of our wealth being decimated and i don't say that to come from a defeatist or a and not only is he speaking facts that's like a percentage like real talk the number of massacres race riots just slave just ma it's just it makes you sick. It makes you come out of the whole cosmos. Like, I'm telling you, nothing else starts to make sense once you really tr learn the truth. And it's like, okay, humanity, we got to stop playing. Victim mindset, but I think if we just have an honest conversation about history and what we've gone through when we've been here, um, racism is definitely a big part of that. And there are a lot of successful black Americans, a lot of millionaires, a lot of, you know, business owners, but they're exceptions for sure for a reason. Um, and there's a big difference between income and wealth. I would like to challenge the ideal that African Americans are lazy or that we don't have a good work ethic. I think there's this perception that, you know, we're here, we're in America. How are we not doing better for ourselves? So. So. Now I want to show you guys something real quick. They're going to ask another question and watch this. So now now they ask the question, is the American dream only for white people? Now notice when they add a little bit more hardcoreness to it, only for white people. Now watch what happens. It's only for white people. I believe that the American dream is only for white people because it says... He's from a time when he had to live through that. Now, you see how notice none of the kids came over and sat with him because... Yeah, we might have to deal with systemically, but the language we deal with is it's all equal and we got to go hunt and stop the races. But in different people's time periods, they lived through something that was much more brutal. And this is what I call like man syndrome or man grandfather syndrome. When like, you know, you'll see like a grandpa with like some whiskey or something. He's like, oh, hiccup. And the little kid's like, grandpa, what, what, grandpa, you know what I'm saying? And then the kid one day grows up and. It's like a cycle, you know what I mean? Equal. And when we talk about equal, there's no equality. And the reason I bring that up is because the irony of that situation is after knowing everything I know, I get the, I get the idea or the image that one day I'm going to be like an elderly man and like a great grandkid's going to come up to me and be like, great papa or papa, uh, they, they, they said that... Mm, my TV show was silly, and I'd be like, why? And it's because, because they don't like my trucks. And then I'd get to like laughing or something, and that'd be something that they got to deal with for that, their time. You see what I'm saying? It like gets softer and softer, but still it needs to be dealt with. And so sometimes Paul, great Pawpaw needs to be like, oh, okay, maybe it isn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> Between um, 
the one percent, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Trumps, and the people who really run um, the media and things of that nature. So for black people growing up in America and living in America, we could become rich, we could become wealthy, but we are not on the equal playing field of white America. The system of white supremacy, which is in the law enforcement, which is in the uh, judicial system, which is in the prison industrial association, also in the politics. Um, we are not equal in any of those terms. And sometimes when you hear the word... When I was back then when you were speaking, I, I started thinking, like, could we ever actually, as black people, have... And that's how the word and spirit works sometimes. Sometimes you plant a seed and logic comes. I have the American dream here in America, and I don't, I don't know if we really can being... I'm trying to be careful with my words, but I, I do think there needs to be a, a degree of separatism. Like, black people, we really need to have our, our own um, to, to fully take part in that dream. This is their system. Yeah. Why would we dream of being equal in a system that wasn't designed for us? That's a very dangerous question. That is a very dangerous question. The American dream, at least the way that I define it, is, you know, freedom of opportunity, freedom to choose what I, what I want to do, freedom to acquire wealth the same way that anybody else can. Um, obviously, we're fighting the tides of time on that uh, and, and our circumstances, but it's hard because it's, it's hard to honor that, but then also want more for myself. And I think that as black people, we're always teeter-tottering on that line of like, well, am I American? Like, do I get the American dream or do I... Do we just tear all this down and build something new? White people are not the only people entitled to the American dream ever. And I think that that's why. I think he is a good representation of what people need to understand that one day all institutions will change. When I say that, I'm simply meaning he is light skinned, right? He's obviously mixed. And people who are stuck in the middle are not going to take the bullshit forever. We're all here because our ancestors made it so that we can stand here and pursue that American dream. I wouldn't have been here if it meant that it Her as well. was not for everyone. I wouldn't have even entered America. You know, I feel like not just African, but other people as well in different countries. And from what I have seen, I've seen other people, even Africans and African-Americans, succeeding in their own way and that's why i feel like like you said you can interpret the american dream in a different way whatever industry or whatever it is that you're focusing on because there is a level of opportunity there there is some way that you can be successful you know talking about trevor noah you know who took over the daily show it wouldn't have been possible for him coming in as an african he got his american dream it made us as well other africans believe that it is possible the american dream writes his check so he gets to have wealth or whatever it is that he's experiencing, but the American dream is the one who writes his check, not him. Mm. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. But do you see how we would put it as he had his American dream, even though someone writes his check. But for him or for some of us looking at it on the other side, that's his American dream because his goal was to get there. The biggest cultural shock I saw coming here was definitely the lifestyle because the lifestyle I saw of America, especially Los Angeles, was portrayed as a very rich lifestyle. And of course, I came here as a, school, as a student and coming here, living here and seeing the reality of it, seeing different homeless people, disadvantaged people, was really a cultural shock for me because I didn't expect to see that. And... I guess also the way people were handling each other because coming in as an African, I thought people were together. But since being here, I saw that there was a huge divide or there is still a huge divide within the African-American community themselves. If he had stayed in, uh, in South Africa, would he have had the same opportunity that he had here? No, no. Like, you know, so corporate is writing his check. But like us growing up, the reason we move here is because we don't have it better back home. Like, me, like for me, I'm the first person ever in my family in America. Everybody else is back home. Everybody is depending on me. Like, all of them, my mom, she's dying to come here. Like, 
she was willing to do anything just for her to be in America. So and that's how they divide us. They basically make it look like, oh, we're lazy. Look at this opportunity that they're given, knowing they're not giving us no opportunities. And the opportunities they're giving other people. I was watching one time, listen, as an average citizen here, my mama, like I said in many videos, didn't play that. So we got educated in school and outside of school. But even getting educated inside of school, my mama didn't play that. So I had like a very well, I had a very top notch education. Time is money, and she spent a lot of time, if you will. So with that being said, then outside of my mom, I have the internet in this day and age, and I have my own capability of doing my own research and, and you know with me going to community college and, fin and uh, finishing high school and whatnot but what I'm saying is basically when I researched a lot of these courses that they're having Africans and African students do it's basically tour guides and stuff when I look at course loads and what they're actually having people do across the world and they say uh, students and this and that they're giving certain people grants and stuff to do certain jobs of immigrant descent that'll be extremely happy to be an american I'm telling you all once you pay attention to what the system is truly doing you'll see that they're creating a form of indentured servantry through appreciation and imagery if that makes sense while destroying the people here using our ideas and buildings and making us look like fools so, you know, all I can do is really plant the seeds. Y'all can do what y'all want. Y'all can believe what you want. There's a lot of rap songs talking about this. This is a good documentary if you guys want to watch it by Jubilee. Um, so, yeah, later. Stop supporting each other and started supporting corporate America. So the racism plays a major part, but we don't have to buy into it. I have been waiting to disagree with you, my brother. <laughs> I've been, I'm waiting patiently. The thing is, even though I want to disagree with you, I get where you're coming from. When I see black people talking about racism, all that stuff, I'm like, what is wrong with these people? You guys have food, you have EBT, all this thing. And you're here shouting about somebody is racist too. Just leave that person and move on. I feel that way. Like, why are they always like complaining? But when Black Lives Matters started happening, like, I sat down, I said, I need to actually know why these people are pained. And if we look at the history, what they've done to them, like, if you actually sit down, watch some documentaries, how they were maltreated, how the, I don't think if I'm actually born, I will forgive those people. I don't care. It's easier for us Africans that were raised in Africa to feel like they're complaining because we were raised through struggle. Like, I barely even have water. And you, you have water, you're complaining. But then, it's not about the basic necessity or about how we are raised. We are raised like, I don't want to say way better. We might not have resources, but there are some way, like our own um, people will not look down on us or put us behind. So it's in their, they're not sure that way. Like, they just can't overlook it. And if you sit down and watch everything that the, the forefathers have been through for you, I changed my mind. No, they need to be angry. However, they should still move forward. I mean, we, we, we have police brutality back home too. Sure. We have, like, if you go to Cameroon and then you see how that police officer treat, like, treat us and they're, they're black just like us, you're not even going to believe it. You know, and in Cameroon we have this thing. We have, have, you heard, have you guys heard the word, like, tribalism? So, yeah, 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 it happens so, in Africa. Yeah, so, so we do get oppressed too. Mm, and I agree. So when I'm saying, like, we need to, like, look past that, I'm not saying forget what happened to you guys or me. At the end of the day, we cannot just sit and just grieve on the past. We have to be able to move on, but not forget.